justice for Shanquilla Robinson. Thanks to the latest development in the Shanquilla Robinson case, the Cabo Six has been forced into a panic. So many things have been happening behind the scenes in relation to the investigation of Shanquilla Robinson's death. So, what has been happening so far? And more importantly, could the case be closer to being solved? Keep watching until the very end to find out. But before we continue, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below saying, I have subscribed and I will reply to your comment. Are you ready? Number nine, Alice Hyatt. Alice Hyatt, who was one of the friends that traveled with Shanquilla Robinson to Cabo, has reportedly been fired from her job following recent developments. It's unclear why she was fired, especially if she is innocent. Some speculate that her manager may have uncovered something about her that even the police could not find, something that could be damaging. While the full picture is not yet clear, it appears that the manager wants nothing to do with Elise Hyatt, likely due to the negative attention surrounding her. Elise Hyatt is a North Carolinian who has lived in both High Point and Winston-Salem, which is located in Forsyth County, North Carolina. She is the daughter of King Davis and Andre Arthur Hyatt and has a sister named Andrea who is a police officer in Greensboro, Guilford County, North Carolina. Andrea started working there in 2011. Unfortunately, Elisa's stepbrother, Kevin Davis, passed away on September 23rd, 2014, at the young age of 26. Elise graduated from Winston-Salem State University in 2018. She reportedly traveled to Cabo San Lucas in the Mexican state of Baja, California, with Shanquella Robinson and five other friends, including Shanquella Robinson, who is two years younger than Elise. Number eight, online absence. Tragically, Elisa's sister, Anita, was also murdered in High Point on the same day that Shanquela Brenada Robinson was found dead in a room at the Fundadores Beach Club in San Jose del Cabo, Baja California. Shanquela was just 25 years old when she passed away. After her death, Elise removed all traces of her online presence, including her LinkedIn profile, where she was listed as a certified nursing assistant at High Point's Penebrin at Merrifield. A video of a woman attacking Shanquela in a hotel room went viral on November 15th, 2022. She and the other witnesses are suspected of filming the assault without stopping it or preventing the video from being leaked. Even 10 weeks after the death of Charlotte Brader, also known as Shanquela Bernada Robinson, at the age of 25 in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, her family is still searching for answers. Number seven, family gathering. Shanquela's loved ones gathered at her gravesite to honor her memory by releasing balloons and gathering around her grave. She's smiling down on us, her mother, Salamandra Robinson, told the Charlotte Observer. We have good days and bad days, but we're out here to celebrate. Mario Black, an organizer with the Million Youth March of Charlotte in Salisbury, said that while Shanquella's family and friends are remembering her on her past birthdays, they are still waiting for updates on her case. Our hope is justice, Mario Black told WFAE, and this is one way of keeping it going, keeping it alive, to let them know that we haven't forgotten. We're not going to let up until justice is served. Number six, unresponsiveness. According to reports, Shanquella was found unresponsive at Via Linda 32 in Cabo on October 29th. After someone in the group called 911, a doctor arrived quickly and performed CPR on her despite their efforts. She was pronounced dead less than 15 minutes later at 3 p.m., as reported by Queen City News. However, Shanquella's mother, Salamandra, has claimed that her daughter's friends returned from Mexico with conflicting stories about what happened to her. Salamandra alleges that they claimed Shanquella was not feeling well and had alcohol poisoning, but they could not find a pulse. According to Queen City News, the U.S. State Department initially stated that there was no concrete evidence to support the theory that Shanquella was murdered. Number five, the video discovery. Salamandra obtained Shanquella Robinson's death certificate, which revealed that her cause of death was not alcohol poisoning, but rather a severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation. 
a video of a physical altercation between two women went viral on social media, with one of them identified as Shanquella Robinson. The disturbing video shows Shanquella Robinson being punched, kicked, and thrown to the ground, while others are heard cheering in the background. Despite the violence, no one attempts to intervene or help her. Some friends who were on the trip have since deleted or made their social media profiles private. Mexican authorities have opened a homicide investigation and, as of November 25th, they were seeking the extradition of a female suspect in the case who had already been charged. Number four, silence. Shanquella Robinson's family has not received any updates from American authorities and no arrests have been reported. Mexican authorities are investigating the incident as a possible murder and have issued an arrest warrant, but the suspect's identity has not been disclosed beyond being another American. According to local prosecutor Antonio Lopez Rodriguez, the crew left Mexico soon after Shanquilla Robinson's body was found. State prosecutor Daniel De La Rosa Anaya did not provide further details on the suspect's identity, and it appears that extradition may be challenging in this case. Number three, the law. The extradition of a U.S. citizen who is allegedly responsible for the death of a tourist in Cabo has sparked debate about the rights of citizens in such cases. While unusual, experts say that such extraditions are not unprecedented. The question of whether citizens have the right to avoid being forcibly removed from their country in order to face trial in another country arises. International law does not require such a provision, but the U.S. and Mexico have a long-standing extradition treaty that is usually respected by both countries. John Perry, a law professor at Lewis and Clark Law School, has studied international extradition and spoke to Insider about this issue. Number two, extradition. According to lawyers at Rawls and Will, who specialize in international extradition cases, when asked about the possibility of the United States having a choice in whether or not to extradite the suspect, Grant Will of the Arizona firm said it might not be the case. The law firm has only dealt with one extradition case involving an American citizen from the United States to Mexico. As law professor John Perry stated, the move is a dramatic step. Former Survivor producer and U.S. citizen Bruce Beresford Redman, who was also extradited to Mexico in 2012 to face charges related to the murder of his wife in Cancun in 2010, was found guilty in a Mexican court and spent seven and a half years in a Mexican prison before being released in 2019. Annually, the United States initiates between 670 and 950 extradition cases, including requests made by U.S. prosecutors to foreign governments and requests made by foreign governments to the United States. Perry stated, that the United States typically extradites 25 to 45 individuals to Mexico each year. Though, it is uncertain how many of these individuals are American citizens. The U.S. government is also investigating Shanquilla Robinson's death and may pursue charges if it is determined that any crimes related to the case occurred within the country. Previously, an FBI spokesperson had stated that the Charlotte, North Carolina field office had launched an investigation into Shanquella Robinson's death. Number one, charges. The family of Shanquella Robinson, however, has publicly stated their desire for her friends to be tried and convicted for her death in a press conference held in December. It has been claimed that unlike other nations, the United States does not typically refuse to extradite its citizens to face charges in other countries and is often willing to extradite suspects to foreign governments. Extradition requests usually require sworn affidavits from prosecutors, investigators, and witnesses, according to Will. The FBI has initiated an investigation into Shanquella Robinson's death, and if any crimes related to the case were committed within the United States, charges may be pressed by the government. According to Perry, the extradition process typically involves a prosecutor explaining the relevant law, an investigator presenting evidence to support the charges, and witnesses providing further corroboration. He also stated that no criminal defendant would be extradited from the United States without first being granted a court hearing where a judge would examine the charges and evidence against them. 
On the other hand, the argument for extradition is that the country requesting it has a legitimate interest in seeing justice served and that cooperation on such matters is mutually beneficial. Perry emphasized that no one is extradited without a court hearing where a judge reviews the charges and evidence. Honestly, this case keeps getting more intense with new discoveries being made on a daily basis. But then again, that is what we are here for. What do you think would happen now? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. But before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, slap the like button, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos about your favorite celebrities and what they've been up to. But hey, the gossip does not end here. Check out this related video to see more, and I will see you in the next video.